See what a savior 
and I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles stop breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me When I lift my voice and shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles stop breaking out I have the authority Jesus has given me You are my champion Giants fall when you stand on defeated Every
powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. I love my days. I've been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God all my life. All my life, you have been faithful. All my
And there is one set of stairs. Uh, we have built a lot of hard for the appropriate building. This is the best space that we can find that's available for rent starting September 12th. And uh, so if you have some accessibility challenges and you have some questions about the, chair, uh, the stairs, then we uh, can be in contact with you. You can reach out to the information on the screen and we can uh, negotiate something to, to help you be a part uh, of our services. But the stairs uh, are right here. It's about seven or eight stairs. And so then we have uh, two accessible washrooms here. This is the space. You can see some of our friends packing up after we have been filming for worship, uh, but there's lots of room. We can have up to 125 people worshiping with us, and so we invite you to uh, bring your masks, but also bring your friends and family as we uh, worship together for the first time in 18 months on September the 12th at 3.30. Say hi to everybody. Hi guys, do you or someone you know have a bike? Are you up for the challenge of riding 15 kilometers? Do you want to support Church and Regent Park by serving meals every Saturday all year long? If so, then you are the perfect candidate to register for Ride for Regent as a solo rider or, or as, as a, a team! team. To learn more, visit www.ciRPToronto.ca. Well, thank you for joining us this weekend for church. We're so glad that you're with us, and we're excited that next weekend, for the first time in 18 months, we're going to be meeting in person, and we would love for you to register or to call in to the church number which is listed below just so that we can have an idea and we want to protect you and worship safely but uh, we would love to have you join us we are going to continue with our series God keep our land as we look towards an election as we see lots of disagreements and discussions from one side of our nation to another just how our church how we as Christians can can help make a difference and bring our country together. We talked a little bit about unity last week and how God desires us to, to love as a family does with love and with humility. And I hope tonight that you'll be encouraged as well as we talk about promises. I haven't uh, got a chance to get down to Dundas Square myself, but my understanding based on different tweets and news reports that uh, there's a lot of interesting billboards that have uh, gone up over the last couple of days. Some of them say CLB, which stands for Certified Lover Boy, which is the title of Drake's new album. Now, I'm not condoning you going out and buying it or streaming it. That's your choice. Uh, but there are some billboards that are promoting his new album and different quotes. But there's some even bigger billboards that say Donda. What is Donda? Who is Donda? Well, Donda is Kanye West's mother. And that is also the name of his extremely long new album. And so here we have billboards that say Donda. We have billboards that are smaller that say CLB. And it is an illustration of a feud that's going on between these two 
rappers that they haven't been getting along since 2010. It's because of a broken promise. A broken promise that was made to Drake. Drake thought he was going to be appearing on one of Kanye's songs, All of the Lights, Baby. And then when the album came out, Drake wasn't on it. And since then, they've been feuding back and forth. Recently, Kanye gave away Drake's actual address. And it's a long ways from where some of us live. They also have been releasing details about each other's private lives. One of Kanye's associate uh, re released the information about Drake's child that knew it, no one really knew about until it was released. That artist, Pusher T, when he came to Toronto, was actually beat up while he was on stage, and the concert had to be ended early. All because of broken promises. Broken promises have, have ruined many people's lives. And when we talk about politicians, when we talk about campaigns, when we talk about elections, very quickly we move to the topic of broken promises. I came across a website which has a lot of backing from some prominent universities in Canada. And they track prominent politicians and their promises. Justin Trudeau has 27% of his promises broken. Doug Ford had 17% of his promises broken. Stephen Harper and his administration had 16% of his promises broken. But friends, aren't you thankful that we could trust God who never breaks his promises to us, whose word goes out and does not fail. It accomplishes what God desires it to accomplish. And sometimes when we look at things from an earth side view, we can be discouraged, we can be worried, we can be alarmed by some of the chaos that's going on in our world. But when we read scripture, when we have an understanding of how God works, who is a God of love, who cares, a God of infinite compassion, we can be encouraged that He is at work, that His ways are higher than our ways. He knows who's going to win this election. He knows what's going on in Canada. And He is using all things and working them together for our good, for His plan to bring as many people as possible the saving knowledge of him and so as we look at Isaiah 55 tonight it's written to the people of Judah who are facing captivity who will soon be taken away who will soon be captured and he writes to encourage them to turn back to God he writes words that will encourage them as they are in exile but his words can also encourage you tonight because they are about God's character and they are true just as they were written thousands of years ago about a God whose ways are high, whose heart is for you, and who accomplishes what he sets out to do. So let's read Isaiah 55 together. Verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God he will freely pardon for our thoughts my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the lord as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater so is my word that goes out from my mouth it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Verse 6 encourages us to seek or to investigate, to do deep research, to seek with care God while he may be found. Well, where's God going? Well, God's not going anywhere. But our lives on this earth are short and we won't have time on the other side of eternity to seek him. We need to seek him now. 
Well, we can. He encourages us to call on Him while He may be found. Call on Him. Pray to Him. Communicate with Him while you still have breath in your lungs. There's an encouragement. Let the wicked and unrighteous come to Him. He desires that people to make changes and come back to home, their creator and, and come back home. And he's, what are his words to those that haven't yet come into relationship with God? Well, to forsake. Or in other words, leave behind or, or leave entirely those things that are holding you down. Those things that are chaining you up. Leave them behind. You might have to delete some people's numbers from your phone. You may have to avoid that corner where you used to, to buy drugs on. You might have to, to clear out your computer and get rid of some DVDs and, and to, to make some changes, to seek help for some things that are going on in your life. Leave entirely that junk and that rubbish and those things that are holding you back and seek God where He may be found. He says, Turn. In the original language, it means to turn back, to turn around, to come home. God's desire is that we would come home to our Father because He's full of mercy. He's full of compassion. Our God, He, he freely pardons that there's an abundant amount of forgiveness, that there is nothing that God will not forgive. There's nothing that you have done that He won't turn around and say, when we come to Him with a sincere heart, you are forgiven. Because His ways are much higher than our ways. He says His ways are higher than the heavens are from the earth. And this word for heavens is used in Scripture to describe the sky. It's the place where frost and rain and hail come from. It's the location of the stars and the sun and the moon. It's also the location where God lives. That is how high God's ways are above the way that we do things here on earth. Scientists say that there's something called the Carmen Line. That that's when the oxygen gets too high that planes can no longer fly. That's kind of where the heavens begin and the earth ends. That's a hundred kilometers straight up from like here in Regent Park all the way to Barrie. That's about how high the heavens are from the earth. And, and Isaiah uses this as an illustration to describe how much higher are the ways that God does things. And that's why we don't always understand it. That's why sometimes it's frustrating when answers don't come when we want them. Or we get frustrated when God doesn't solve our issues or come to our rescue immediately because God has a higher and a better perspective and ultimately a better way of doing things than we do. Now why does God share this with us? Is he seeking to belittle us or make us feel small or look down upon us? No, not at all. We just, we just looked at how God desires that we would come to him, that we would investigate, that we seek out with care. A God who desires us to receive compassion, who, who has an abundant amount of forgiveness available to us. God wants you to be in relationship with him. But he's using it to describe that we need to trust Him. That we need to, to understand that He is at work, even when we can't see or we don't understand it. Someone has said that even when we can't see God's hand, we can trust His heart because He loves us and does what's best for us. God has it figured out. When it appears to be no way, that God can prepare a way. When there seems to be no way around it, to the left or to the right, God can go over it or through it. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. This word thought, it's most often used to describe, to, to describe plans. 
But this word can mean plans or designs or purposes. God's plans are higher than our plans. God's designs for your life are higher than your designs for your life. God's purpose for your life are much greater than you can even ask or imagine. And just like the rain and the snow come to earth and they prepare the ground so that wheat can grow and create bread, so are the words that God speaks. The statements, the promises, the scriptures, all that God has communicated, all of those promises are not empty. They will not fail. Isaiah explains three ways. It says these things about God's word. Firstly, it won't return empty. In other words, it will not fail. Secondly, God's word accomplish what God desires. That God will create what he desires to create. And thirdly, God's word will achieve the purpose for which it was sent. That it will succeed without cost. That it will always come through. It will always accomplish what its intended purpose is. God's promises are not empty. They can be relied upon even when we don't understand. Even when we're frustrated. Even when people want to debate all day long about different issues. We can trust that God is at work. That God will never be defeated. That his word will always accomplish what it desires to accomplish. I want to just look very briefly at Colossians 1 verses 15 to 17. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is above all things, and in him all things hold together. Verse 17 says, In him all things are held together. That Jesus just wasn't involved in creating the world and, and letting it spin, but he's currently involved in holding our world together. Isn't that encouraging? That his ways are higher. That when things look like they're chaos, Jesus is holding it together. Bruce Barton said this, In him everything is held together, protected and prevented from disintegrating into chaos. That although it may appear to be chaotic to us, that God is holding it together, preventing it from getting out of control. And so friends, we can be encouraged that God's ways are higher. His thoughts, his plans are above anything that we could conceive for our world. And he's currently at work holding our world together. Thrones or powers or rulers or authorities are all created, seen and unseen. They've been created by God. They're less than God. They have less control. They have influence only as much as God gives it to them. And so we pray for leaders that are in charge. We pray for leaders and the next one that will be selected. But God is ultimately overall and controlling all and holding all things together. So if Jesus is holding all things together. Why does everything feel like it's breaking apart? Well, friends, we need to trust that God's ways are higher, that his thoughts are above our thoughts, and we can seek him out. God would like nothing better for you to seek him out, to ask him about this, to ask him about this decision, to ask about what you would have him to do with this health issue, and this issue that's going on, and how you should respond to this friend and for this family member, God wants you to seek him out. And he will guide you and direct you and provide you a way that you may not even be able to see. Friends, there's a pretty chaotic part of our world. There's a lot going on in Afghanistan. It's amazing to think that 20 years of war seemingly are, are washed away in a week. 
We've seen plane loads of Afghanis be airlifted to nations around the world, and thank God for that. Christians that are there and onlookers are worried about what is going to happen next. I came across an encouraging story about an Afghani national who escaped to Pakistan as a refugee. And, and he came to Christ in 1999. And you know where he lives now? In the nation of Canada. And he is active creating TV programming that is broadcast all around the world and into Afghanistan. And it's called Square One World Media. And he's communicating the gospel. And, and he was interviewed by Christianity Today about how God is at work, even though it seems to be chaotic, even though there seems to be disorder. Do you know what the second fastest growing church in the world is? The church in Afghanistan. First is Iran. Second, Afghanistan. Two nations that seek to suppress Christianity. Two weeks, two, two nations that, that, that their governments are opposed to the sharing of the gospel. Yet the church is growing strong followers of Christ that are sharing their faith and the church is growing. His name is Shoab. Abadi, and where the Taliban shuts down social media and, and can t turn off the internet, it cannot stop satellite TV from broadcasting about Jesus into that nation. He's receiving phone calls from Christians for people that want have questions about Christ from Afghanistan. And he says this about the church. He says, we have to give credit to the Lord. He works through difficult circumstances and turns evil into good. Despite these problems, there has been a growth in Christianity inside Afghanistan. But at the same time, going forward, people will see pure Christianity, indigenous Christianity. The Afghanis will see pure Christianity. The international community can pray and help support but the Afghan church must now lead its own worship and give its own teaching. God willing, they will put away their differences and unite in Christ. He said there was a recent conference of Afghani Christians in London. And he said groups of, of Afghanis from different cultures came together. The Hazara and Tajiks and Pashtun. And they met together and they asked each other for forgiveness. He said, Christianity is what makes it possible to live at peace with other ethnicities. If this can happen, it will have a great impact. And we can pray for the church in Afghanistan that it would, would come together, that it would come across cultural lines, that they would be an example. And through that coming together, that they too can, can influence and model what it means to follow Christ. Friends, even in that chaotic situation, it may seem chaotic from this side of the world. But God is at work. And his ways are higher as he seeks to bring as many people as possible to the saving knowledge of him. We're going to move towards concluding our service with communion together. But one more thing that he said spoke out to me and he was talking about the 8,000 Christians that's all there is in Afghanistan right now and he says the majority are Hazara and he said 30% are Tajik and 20% and are Pashtun he said the Hazara come from a Shiite Muslim background where they believe that someone can sacrifice their life to another and he says that is an amazing discussion that opens the way to share about Jesus. And friends, that's what we remember when we take the cup and we take the bread together, is that Jesus sacrificed his life so that there could be an abundant amount of forgiveness, so that we could be freely pardoned, so that we could leave our old life behind and come and be made new by Christ. And we follow his commandment 
We join with people all around the world in this beautiful tradition of taking bread and taking juice and remember Jesus' death and his resurrection. And so in Matthew 26, we read that while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Let's take the bread together, symbolizing Jesus' body that was broken for us. Then he, Jesus took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's take the cup together, symbolizing Jesus' blood that was spilled for us. Lord, we're thankful for the sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. And for those that are still seeking you out, for those that, that desire to come and turn back to you, Lord, we pray that you would draw them to yourself right now. Lord, that even now that they would just, God, forgive, ask for your forgiveness and that you would come and take them and, and change their lives and set them free to serve you. Lord, we want to pray for Linda Daniels and her family in Georgia, we pray that you be with them, that you would uh, support them and watch over them, protect them and guide them and direct them in every decision of their lives. Lord, we pray for Anna who's having pain in her legs, Lord, that you would bring complete healing to her body. And God, we're excited that you have opened up a place for us to worship. And so God, we pray that, that you would move upon people's hearts and lives, that you would give them courage that you would guide them and direct them to the decisions that they need to make regarding COVID and regarding protecting themselves. But Lord, we look forward to gathering again at 17 George Street. Lord, that you would continue to bring people our way, that we would continue to make disciples in Regent Park, and that you would continue to provide for our needs. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We worship you. We pray that you would use us this week to help hold our world together with your help. And that you would encourage those that are frustrated, that are confused, that are unsure what is going on. That you are a God that does all things well and have a high plan. We pray that you would encourage them with that promise that you always keep. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for being with us. Again, if you have any questions about where... the the church is on Regent Street, then you can reach out to the numbers and email at the bottom of the screen. Looking forward to riding for Regent this week, and we want to thankful for Team Sanat and Team Bolton and Team Goring and Team Yate. And if you uh, would like to support them, you can do that through the website as well. Have a great week. We love you. We miss you. We look forward to seeing you soon.
Yeah. 